Well, the problem is really the data during forest fires or fires in buildings or in industrial sites. And one example is the Greenfell um, Tower fire in 2017 that killed at least 72 people. And the problem at that time was that the technology was really not there of having drones that would be able to fly inside of the tower and look for survivors, get situational awareness inside of the disaster zone. And at that time, actually, I used to live close by to the tower and I used to drive by when going to work to, in London. And it was really shocking to see this event. And people used to ask me whether I have a drone that can fly inside. And I didn't have that. And since then, we have been developing this fire drone, as we call it, which is a drone that can fly inside of hot environments and also cold environments. And like this, get the data faster, cheaper, and with less risk compared to other manual methods. Well, typically, if there is a fire, the question is, is somebody inside? How does the structure look like? And where are the sources of the fire, of the heat? So how does the heat distribution look like in the, in the environment? And this is something that we can sense with the fire drone. It has a thermal camera and it has an RGB camera and could have also other sensors such as oxygen and gas sensors, toxicity sensors and so on that can then get information on the structure of the environment and the toxicity and the heat distribution. And like this, get better situational awareness. Normal uh, drones that one can buy are made of plastic, the motors are at the periphery, and the propellers and everything can melt very quickly. So these type of drones cannot survive in hot environments. So we looked at the use case of firefighters, we did questionnaires with them, and we identified the key design parameters that are important to build into such a system. So how we have built it is that we use aerogel, so it's a polyamide aerogel, which is something that is extremely lightweight and it has a very high heat resistance or the heat transfer coefficient is very low. So it's a very good insulator. We have also arranged it in, in a spherical um, geometry so that the heat transfer is low. And we have integrated a CO2 cartridge that can cool down the internals of the drone where also then the motors are located. So the motors are not on the periphery, they're inside of the main capsule of the drone. And because of all of that, uh, the drone can fly and operate uh, very robustly in uh, very hot and very cold environments. Wiedergabe nicht möglich. Warum nicht, David? Ach. Du kannst sie gar nicht gut steuern, oder? Die ist so leicht. Mit ja, ja. Eben, sobald du im Feuer bist, macht die Blusche eine Klatschzeit rein. Schon mal da. Schon da. The drone is not designed to fly inside of the flame for a very long time, but it's designed to operate at 200 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes. And that's already quite a lot because around the fire where the environment is hot and is toxic, um, we need better information. So this is a trial that shows that this type of drones, the fire drones, using these aerogel materials can operate more robustly um, compared to other drones, which pretty much melt very quickly and so are not suitable at all for those environments. So we are now working with industrial partners from environmental sciences, looking at forest fires to um, residential environments. Uh, so with firefighters for buildings so that the drones would live inside of the building and be fire sensing devices, but also with industrial sites such as tunnels or industrial facilities, factories, um, where fire drones could be very helpful to get situational awareness in case of an accident. Dr. Ja, das ist der dritte Akku. Die Drohne? Nein, das ist der. Das ist der.